everyone uh, from and I'm welcoming you on in behalf of Association of Christian Media um, and welcome Brendan. good to have you back with us uh, and to the topic today is um, dealing with ad agencies and <laughs> Brendan and I were just chatting before and um, uh, it's it's not an easy task this, but I'll leave that to him. Uh, I just wanted to feed a little bit because this group is pretty well the same group that was with us yesterday for selling to small businesses, which is really where most of the income comes for a community radio. And uh, one of the things that was said to me when we sell advertising to small businesses. We are not selling airtime, we're selling business solutions. Um, airtime is a funny concept that small businesses don't really understand. And when you start talking that language, they want to know numbers and their mind boggles with these hundreds of thousands of people and so on, which is not really where you want to go. You want to be selling business solutions, which is what uh, Brendan going through yesterday how you need to build your relationships, study the business, uh, do your research, come up with helpful ideas to help the business achieve their goals. Um, ad agencies, it's, it's a bit of a different story, but uh, that's today's exciting story. Let's just pray before we start. Father, I thank you for all that we can learn. Thank you for the radio stations that you've given us. Thank you for the opportunities. And uh, Lord, I just give you thanks for uh, Brendan and the uh, skills and experience that you've given him. Help us to listen carefully today and to be able to implement what we learn. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And, uh, over to Brendan. I think I don't think there's anyone new, but just in case, Brendan comes from East Coast Radio and uh, drives the or inspires. I won't say drives. I'd say inspires the sales team um, at East Coast. Over to you, Brendan. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dave, and hello to everyone. Good to be back again. Um, for those of you who are rejoining, I see some familiar faces. So good to see you back. For those of you who are new, welcome. Um, I, I always say at the beginning that I love radio gatherings, I love radio people, I love getting together and sharing war stories and exciting stories and we live in an amazing world and it's such a, a small community. I had a meeting with a, 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 a presenter of ours who's a legend in KZN who left our station and moved on elsewhere and is coming back and just picked up the conversation where we left off and just there's this love for radio, which is amazing. So uh, I love to be with everyone today. I hope you enjoy it. Um, to touch on what Dave mentioned at the beginning, it is 100% right. Airtime is, a, is an internal terminology that we use. Uh, it's part of our radio speak and our radio language. We definitely shouldn't do that or have those kind of conversations with clients because it does confuse them. We have to be careful that our language that we use internally is not something that we repeat when we go out and meet with small businesses that, that might not understand. Uh, and it's definitely, we, we sell solutions and we sell access to a, an amazing market. But today is about selling your station to ad agencies. That's our topic, and we're going to go into some details, some practical insights, and some, some tips for future, and, and also some basics, some understanding. I think the, um, the first thing you need to know is that I have not uh, operated in an agency environment, but being at East Coast Radio for 17 years, I've worked very closely with my colleague who heads the agency division. I've worked with agencies and looked after agencies, so I have got experience um, not necessarily leading the division, but working with advertising agencies. And it really is a different um, level of communication. So yesterday we spoke about small businesses, today it's advertising agencies, and next week we're going to be chatting about government. And those are our three divisions at East Coast Radio. So I have knowledge and understanding of all of them. And today we're going to be sharing more about ad agencies and how such a, a different 
dynamic, a different language, a different way of making decisions even uh, comes into play. Um, so I'm hoping to share some practical insights with you. Uh, if this is you uh, and you are all dressed for business at the top and then very relaxed at the bottom, that is the way of Zoom these days and people working from home, etc. So if you're comfortable like this, good for you. Well done. If you're at the office, then you're fully dressed, which is also good. But the reason I put this up is just to remind you that we are on a Zoom call. So technology we are relying on. Uh, if anything goes wrong, please pop it into the group chat and either Dave or Natalie will sort it out. But um, the other thing I mentioned during these and I always mention is that interaction is my favorite thing. I love interacting with people. But during a technology presentation or, or a presentation while we're on Zoom technology is not the easiest to interact uh, during the presentation. So if you are taking notes, that's great. And if you have questions, please take note of those questions and I will cover them right at the end and I will answer all questions. You can either put them in the, in the uh, group chat or you can uh, be very brave and unmute your microphone and we can have a chat at the end of the, the presentation. But I really look forward to the questions. It really does help us learn more and learn together because you ask questions that other people very possibly could ask as well. All right, we're going to talk about selling your station to ad agencies. So first of all, I, as with everything that I do when I do training is I always try and cover the basics first, and then we move on to the more practical and some insights, etc. So there are organizations that deal with agencies on a regular basis. So you have a full understanding of what an advertising agency is and what they do. Um, but just for the sake of uh, anyone on the call, on the, the Zoom call that might not necessarily know the details and the ins and outs, I'm going to cover some basics. So what is an advertising agency? So it's often referred to as a creative agency or ad agency. It's a business dedicated to creating, planning, and handling advertising and sometimes other forms of promotion and marketing for its clients. So these agencies may be hired to produce television adverts, uh, radio adverts, online advertising, out of home advertising, mobile marketing, and even augmented reality advertising as part of an advertising campaign. But I think the, the name says it all. They are a agency that looks after advertising. Um, generally, they are independent. They are not part of the company, although there is a trend for in-house agencies, but we'll get to that a bit later. So I thought I'd just run through very quickly the history of advertising agencies in that the first agency was in 1786. That is a very, very long time ago. And it's credited to a gentleman by the name of William Taylor. He was in London and he started the first agency which looked after businesses within London. But as soon as the 1800s, there were other agencies formed that started to have an influence in businesses around the world. I mean, let your mind wrap around that. We're here in the year 2020, and 220 years ago, there were advertising agencies dealing with promotion. So we are in a game, in a business, besides just radio, I'm talking about advertising now that has been around for a very, very long time. So there's a lot of learnings that have come through this process. It's, it's grown since the start of uh, that first agency in London. These are just some of the samples of, of the agencies that are out there that have won multiple awards. There are an estimated 550,000 advertising agencies around the world, which is mind boggling. Um, they do tend to get the lion's share of advertising spend as well. Uh, so that is because they deal really with the, the big clients and, and we'll get into the reasons for that. Um, so in 2019, this was the share of some of the top advertising agencies around the world. The top ad agencies contributed 60 billion uh, I think it's 60 billion US dollars uh, worth of spend in 2019. 60 billion is a large amount of money, um, but global ad spend is in the hundreds of billions uh, for the year 2019. Very interestingly, and it comes up a little bit later in our conversation, is the affinity of, of agencies for digital. Um, so we are, as radio, a traditional medium. And so we have to fight a little bit harder to get our share of the pie. It used to be that, uh, that TV and radio were top of the pile and TV is still up there. Radio is still up there, but digital is slowly but surely eating everyone's lunch money. 
the graph that you see in front of you, the, uh, the black um, pillar is the total amount of digital ad spend, and the blue line in the percentage is the contribution towards the total ad spend for so it, across all media. And basically what it says is 2019 was the first year that half of all ad spend, we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars, half of all ad spend went onto digital. That is a huge portion. The challenge and what skews that number slightly is the dominance of Google and Facebook. And so they take a lion's share of that portion. Um, also, they don't declare all of their advertising revenue income. So it becomes difficult to track, but they are definitely the highest. Uh, Google, Facebook, and YouTube, um, which doesn't feature on that list there. And then Amazon and some others that we that we haven't um, we haven't even heard of here in South Africa. But I just thought that would be interesting to look at because it is something that we up against. Uh, touched on it briefly yesterday is this um, uh, almost this desire to target digital advertising above everything else. So we, as radio, we have to work a little bit harder. From an ad agency point of view, for the most part, they look after the top tiers of the client pyramid. For it to be worth their while, they deal with larger clients because obviously they make more money from that. So the bigger blue chip companies, the banks and the large retailers, etc., sit at the top of that pyramid and then next down from that. So that's what we call our A clients or those big multi-millionaire clients, which we would all love to have more of. And then the next tier is also taken care of by them. Some of the smaller agencies do take care of some small businesses, but generally they tend to look after the upper tier of the client pyramid. All right, so I thought I would share a little bit more about the types of advertising agencies because that is another thing that's evolved over the years. And this is important to know because if we're going to be pitching our uh, radio stations to these ad agencies, if we're going to try and get clients from the ad agencies, we need to understand which of the agencies to speak to. Now, there's a lot here. In fact, there were a lot more than this, and I edited the list down. Um, there was, I think, up to 18, but some of them were very specific and not so much in South Africa. But we have the full service agency. So they do everything that all of the others do. They, they do that as well. Uh, media planning and buying agencies where they literally just do media planning and they buy and some of the smaller agencies will buy their airtime or buy their exposure through those media buying agencies. Um, so they might not necessarily be involved in the decisions, they might just execute the actual bookings. Then there are PR agencies. Generally, those agencies get given a very small budget and they try and generate a lot of um, press. So a lot of publicity for companies and those could be big companies, but their budgets are tiny. Most of the time, if you get contacted from a PR agency, it's because they want a free interview or a free uh, exposure of some sort. Um, they love approaching radio stations to get free exposure. And then if you try and secure any revenue from them, they say there is no budget. So those are PR agencies. And then these have this next section, number four, has grown massively over the last few years. Digital, interactive, and online marketing agencies. Um, I've put that all together because there are a lot of um, splinters that come from there uh, and digital agencies that specialize in particular areas. So you might get search engine optimization specialists and you might get social media specialists, which has become a separate category as well. But digital agencies are hugely popular. Promotional and marketing services agencies, they deal a lot with activations, with um, promotion people and uh, activating a brand at events, etc. Then you've got branding and identity agencies. They specialize in helping companies uh, strengthen their brand, come up with logos, come up with uh, uh, um, brand strategies, etc. Et design agencies and creative boutiques. So they help with the digital design that might redesign a website, they might uh, create the corporate um, image of an of a organization. Then social media agencies used to be part of the digital agencies, but they've separated where social media, because it's become such a big industry, the social media agencies specialize. You even get some that specialize on one particular social media. There might be a Facebook specialist agency. There might be an Instagram specialist agency. And what happens is uh, someone will work for an ad agency for a period of time, 
and believe that they can offer the, the knowledge that they have gained to other people and they will branch off. So there are massive, huge, big ad agencies that take whole buildings and then one person can leave from them, work from home as a single uh, person, and they also calling themselves an agency and offering a service. So this is the range that you have to deal with. And companies generally tend to look at the size of the agency before they consider. So generally, uh, generally speaking, all of the really big companies that spend really large amounts of money, they would go with the bigger agencies. And then some of them would choose boutique agencies to assist. I know this is a lot, but, but this is the level that we have to deal with when, we, when we're operating in the ad agency space. So next is the search marketing agency. So they specialize in things like Google AdWords, et cetera, and search engine optimization. Um, specialized agencies, um, I've bundled those all together. Those could be, um, uh, they specialize in the finance sector or in the hospitality sector or retail sector, et cetera. And then you have what I mentioned earlier, in-house agencies. So what we are noticing is that a lot of businesses are realizing that they could bring the services of an agency in-house to keep their costs down. Generally, what agencies do is they on-sell their, their time as their service. And so they might do some design work, they might do some brand strategy discussions, and it's almost like a lawyer where they bill for their time or for the project. And those costs can be quite high. Uh, so to keep costs down, because I think all companies are in that space where they're watching their costs, they, they might bring it in-house. So instead of paying for an agency, they would employ two or three or five or 10 people to work in-house and they create a separate company, but within their own company to service them. Uh, there's a big, very big insurance group that spends probably in the top three um, global, uh, not global, South African ad spend. And they have probably about a year and a half, two years ago, they've stopped dealing with their agencies and they created their own in-house agency to deal with all of their insurance brands. So it does change the dynamic of dealing with them because you're actually dealing with staff of the company. But um, that is the level of, of ad agencies that we work with these days. So the next step, besides identifying who you should approach from an ad agency, so if you find out they are a digital agency, is that the right person to approach, the right company to approach if you're trying to target a particular brand? Um, is it the media strategy? Is it, I mean, it, it, it can be very, very confusing. So you need to have an understanding of the types of ad agencies, which I've just covered, but you also need to understand which clients you're trying to target. And so we'll chat a little bit more about that later. Um, but once you know which ad agency you're going to speak to, then you need to know who at that ad agency you need to deal with. So again, this is um, practical, basic information, which, which uh, some of you will know already, and others hopefully will be learning something new. So we'll start a little bit higher up. So we start with the account director. So this person is responsible. Uh, they look after the relationship. So if, for example, they sign a brand like Nike, um, this person would be the main contact between Nike and the agency. Their job is to make sure that the client is happy. They work with other people within the ad agency. So they do have some influence as to what the, the, um, the client does from an uh, advertising perspective but it might not necessarily be the first person that you speak to. We'll get to that person a bit later, but they are responsible for managing the agency's relationship with its clients and or accounts, and they deliver creative work that meets the client's needs. So they make sure the client is happy. Uh, all right, whoopsie, let me skip to the next slide. Okay, so we have got the marketing director or manager. So the marketing director manages the marketing process of the business or product, and they can they are responsible for either a single product or service or for several products or services. So it's one step up from the account director. The marketing director works with the account director and the team to decide on the approach of the company for their marketing. And again, this is quite a senior position. So it's not somewhere that you would start your conversation if you're trying to get some agency business. You would actually start a bit further down um, and it's two steps away from where we are now, but we'll get to that. Okay, so the next one is the brand strategist. 
So this could be the person that you start a conversation with. Uh, the brand strategist provides recommendations on the direction of a brand product or service. Um, the strategist will analyze current market research data and trends to advise on and develop practical solutions for marketing plans. So the brand strategist, let's say we'll use the Nike example. If Nike is saying that we are um, going to be focused on children, that's going to be our new brand strategy is that we want to really push forward into the new market of children. We focused on athletes. We focused on active people. We focused on women. We want to focus on children. The brand strategist will come up with the overarching strategy that would feed into achieving the client's objectives. If, for example, um, the practical breakdown, so they, they would do the top level discussion and then they would pass the practice. So if they say, to target um, children, we need to focus on family events. So that would be an instruction from the brand strategist to the next person, which is the media buyer. And they then find the right media to meet the strategy. So that takes us to the person that you should actually start with. And I, I just thought it important to mention those others who see what their role is. But the media planner or buyer is generally the main contact person that a radio uh, salesperson or radio sales manager would have contact with because they do the actual planning. They don't create the strategy, they execute the strategy. And so they choose which media would best fulfill what the strategy requires. So the role of a media planner or buyer is to identify the most suitable media platforms to advertise a brand, product, or service. Their goal is to achieve the objectives of the marketing campaign. So they get given a very set guideline of what they need to achieve, who the target market is, et cetera. And then they select the platforms that most meet the client's needs. So it's a lot of information, but the reason I shared all of this, and I mean, that's only four positions of many, many, many positions at a advertising agencies. These are the four that you could have interaction with um, besides possibly even the, the advertising agency owner, if it's a smaller agency. And the smaller the agency, generally, they fulfill all of these roles. There could be a single person that runs the agency and they could fulfill all of these roles. So obviously your relationship would be directly with them. Uh, apologies if you can hear any noise. There's a massive truck going past. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't interfere too much. Um, also, if, gosh, it's distracting. <laughs> um, Hopefully you can't hear it as much as I can. It's deafening where I am. So, so if your focus is to, to deal with the advertising agency, you need to find out, number one, who the agency is that you need to speak to, and number two, who the right person is to start with. And generally, it's the media planner or the buyer. Um, if you have a relationship with them, that's great. If you don't, you have a bit of a long road ahead of you. It's not an easy thing to build a relationship with an agency or get even face-to-face -face meeting time with them because they are exceptionally busy. And if you think of all of the media owners around South Africa, from radio to TV to outdoor to printed to magazines to digital to all of the different platforms, they are consistently approaching agencies to look for these clients. The other reason I mention all of these positions and all of this information is dealing with agencies, once you have the relationship and you've established the relationship and, you, and you're in a place of trust with them, it's, it's fine. But getting to that point is a lot of work. Even when you're at that point, it is a lot of work to maintain that relationship. Um, unless, of course, you've got a, an agency that's really easy to deal with. Um, there's a lot more detail. There's a lot more admin. There's a lot more planning that goes into these kind of relationships. So you really need to... Um, you need to set aside time to do that. I'm just going to pause for one short minute uh, just so that I can close the door where this massive truck is going past. Please excuse me. Okay, it seems to have moved on. Sorry about that, guys. It was this huge big truck. They are retiring the, the driveway in our complex. And this truck, uh, it sounded like it was in my, in my living room area. I'm working from home today. <laughs> so sorry about that. Okay, so moving swiftly on. Basically, what I was saying is that 
to deal with an advertising agency is a fairly um, complicated process to get up and running. I know we are all um, very eager to get big clients on board. I know we are all um, very eager to get big clients' budgets on board, um, but it's it's not an easy, smooth sailing journey. It's a it's a long, detailed, complicated journey. So I, I hope I'm not scaring you away from it. I just wanted to give you a dose of realism to say um, that it's not an easy process. So, uh, but let's follow this and let's go through the um, what's important to advertising agencies because there's certain things that they really focus on. And if this recipe is not correct. Uh, to a point where they might not even engage with you, might not even entertain an appointment with you. Um, like I say, because they get bombarded with so many other companies that come to them. So um, I just wanted to say that this information that I got here that you will see is gained from my colleague who is in charge of advertising agencies at East Coast Radio. So wherever you see a quote mark, I will make reference to that. Um, and this is information that she has shared based on questions that I've asked her. And so I asked her, um, what is important to an advertising agency? So she said, agencies are all about data and insights. That's what drives all of their decisions. So the bigger planning agencies specifically are all about their tools, uh, which for radio is Telmar. Those of you who know Telmar, and they rely heavily on this when selecting the radio station and creating their media plans. Now, she chats on the next slide about smaller agencies and their strategies, but if I can touch on Telmar. Telmar is uh, it's an international company based in New York. They provide a system with multiple tools that plug into the system that allows ad agencies to do research and to book campaigns. So let's focus on Nike as our example again. If Nike has said that they're focusing on children and on families, then they would be able to pull the data and the research from all of the media that they have in their system. And they would be able to choose which platforms will give them the highest uh, quality exposure to the market that they are trying to target. Now, Telmar is purely based on numbers. So if they're looking at the highest exposure for the biggest numbers, um, that's going to come from, unfortunately, the biggest stations. So generally on Telmar, they have a top 10 that they work with, a top 10 in South Africa. So it's literally the top 10 most listened to stations. And they rank from top to bottom, obviously. And when they want to reach a large amount of people, that's where they focus. To a point where East Coast Radio has gone through some ups and some downs in our listenership, where sometimes we've been number 10 or number nine in the country. And sometimes we've been down to 12 or down to 13. And can I tell you, for the big agencies, it makes all the difference. I mean, our listenership could be a million or it could be 900,000. And that difference uh, could depend on whether we're number 10 or number 12. And it's a small difference in listenership, but a massive difference to these big agencies where they will not select anyone for their big clients if they are not in the top 10. So it does make things very difficult for, for um, community radio who don't have maybe as big an audience as that, and you have more of a niche audience, you have definitely a great market to share, 100%. You have a niche, loyal listenership that will respond very, very well to messaging. Uh, and to get in front of an agency and share that and get their attention, um, it, it, I'm just going to be honest and say it's really difficult to do. Uh, because if you're looking to get money from one of the banks or one of the uh, telecommunications providers or the insurance companies who are traditionally the biggest spenders, they program according to mass. They want to reach as many people as possible. So unfortunately for the bigger agencies, it's not as much of a reality. That said, there are um, big agencies that also deal with niche clients that look for specific target markets. And I think that's an area that community radio and some of the smaller radio stations will also have an opportunity to carve out a space. So I mentioned yesterday that the trend now is to focus on um, unique, uh, smaller, I'll call them boutique audiences. I mentioned yesterday that a, um, a medical aid provider in South Africa was one of the big sponsors of our largest event, which had 31,000 people, and they sponsored it for seven or eight years in total. Um, but they have since canceled their sponsorship, saying that they're looking for more 
uh, niche events, smaller events, so that they can target um, what they call a tribe almost. So it's a, a smaller group of unique people so that they can have more of a meaningful engagement rather than a mass group of, of very, very, very diverse people. So there is opportunity for community radio. There's definitely an opportunity to reach into and find those niches that you fill. And we get to it later, but it really is about understanding your listenership, understanding what makes them unique, and then connecting that with the right brand. Sometimes it will be an agency client, some, some, sometimes it'll be a direct client, but it's about understanding those two, but we'll, we'll get to that a little bit more. So they use Telmar for their planning, the bigger agencies, it just makes their lives easier and more data driven, which as she's mentioned is very important to them. So she has said here that smaller agencies, however, rely on their affinity to the station. And there are a lot of smaller agencies. So um, their affinity to the station really is their understanding of the station, their relationship with the station. In some instances, the talent. So if they have a preference for a presenter and they, they love a presenter, then they would go with the station where they, they enjoy the presenter. And that's why presenters form a big part of your solution moving forward. And you'll see that in the practical tips that I cover later. So insights and surveys are equally useful tools uh, and being able to provide all this goes a long way to building credibility of the brand and developing trust in the relationship. So if your station is not relying uh, on or doesn't have access to information, data, surveys, etc. That is a tip for you to note now. If you want to build your profile with an agency, um, a great meeting is not going to cover it. Even if you have a great meeting with them, they're still going to ask for data and insights and surveys, et cetera. And so we'll chat a bit more about that uh, on a practical level later. Got some suggestions. All right, so, so the first and the easiest suggestion is conduct some surveys. Uh, you have a listenership, you have access to your own market, and you can create your own surveys very easy. There's uh, survey platforms which are free of charge to use online. You just need to Google it and find some reliable ones. Um, you can announce, you can create some adverts, you can get the DJs to talk about it on air, to send people onto your website or onto your social media to complete the survey forms, and you can gather data which you can use accurately. So East Coast Radio does this very effectively, and we've moved into the space because we understand that data, information about our listeners and what their um, preferences are, what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy, what they're planning to do, etc., is extremely valuable. So Almost every month, we do a new survey amongst our listeners. Now, these days, people are busy and, uh, and they don't necessarily have time to fill in surveys, so we incentivize them. So we put a hamper or a voucher or something of that sort as an incentive for anyone who completes the survey. It doesn't have to be anything big, but it could be a hamper of goodies. It could be a voucher to a restaurant. It could be a voucher for groceries, which are always very popular these days. And we use that as an incentive. We promote it on our website. We promote it on our social media. And we invite people to click on the link and complete a short survey. You can't make it a 30-minute survey. It's really got to take five minutes to complete. And this survey, the data that you get from this, really can unlock conversations with agencies and with clients. And that's if you do a survey on um, coming out of lockdown. So now that we're on level one, uh, talk to us about some of your habits. Are you planning to do any shopping in the following sectors? And you can put multiple choice and they can say, DIY, are you planning to go to a restaurant? Are you planning to stay in a hotel or a B&B? Are you planning to buy an appliance? Are you planning to, and they can click on each one of those. Um, you can also ask them about what are their favorite hobbies? What other media do they consume? Um, lifestyle things. So you can ask age, you can ask uh, demographic information, you can ask about uh, how many people are in the household, whether they have a car in the household or two cars, whether they buy, uh, they bought their house, they own their house, or whether they rent it, whether they stay with someone else. This is all information that an agency would love. So if you start picking up trends amongst your listenership to say that they are very active, they, they go for walks in their neighborhood, they go for park runs, they jog on the spot, they do home exercise. Like if you find out that your listenership is quite an active listenership, 
that is valuable. That's a niche market that an agency might be very interested in. So you go to an agency with that information, and now you're having a meaningful conversation based on their language, which is data. So the, the more information you build over time, the better you can build a profile. And it literally does not cost you anything. The survey platform's free of charge, your airtime is free of charge, uh, your social media, you manage yourself. So it doesn't cost you anything. Take a little bit of time to build up a series of surveys, but that's what we've done. Like I say, we do one a month. We try not to bombard the listeners with it too much because then the, the return rate is, is a bit lower. Um, but obviously, it's, a, it's data that we could use. And then if you find out that, um, that health and wellness is a focus, then your approach would be to go and approach health and wellness clients. And you say, hey, we surveyed a thousand of our listeners and 80% of them said if they got a good deal at a gym, they would be keen to, to take part. Now, that's information that will help a small business owner or an agency to segment for their client. Because at the end of the day, the agency is a middleman. Agency is a middle person between their client and uh, their objectives and the access to the market. So if their client comes to them and say, we're looking for active people who are going to buy our product, they then look for platforms with active people. And now you're not a, a radio station. Now you're creating access where 80% of your listenership is interested and active. That's access to a market. And now we can draw the two together. But again, it, it takes a while to get that data, but it's very, very important to do. Um, so you can do that through your website. You can do that through social media. If you have outside broadcasts, you can literally get someone to physically fill in a, a survey sheet, which you can print out. Um, and that's only if you have more people there. But as you start building this data, it becomes a library of information which you can share with an advertising agency. All right, when you're dealing with an ad agency, these guys are professionals. They know their stuff, uh, very different to the small business owner where we are talking our radio language and we're talking about airtime and we're talking about live reads and we're talking about things that maybe the small business owner might not understand if they don't know radio, the agency game is very different. They know their stuff and they operate in that ad speak zone. They love terminology and they love all of the, the uh, language that goes with advertising and media. So you need to be prepared. You need to know your information. You need to know your brand and your listeners as much as you can because these are questions that they will fire at you. And if you don't have that information, it's going to create a delay in building a relationship with them. So you do need to know your information. The next step and the strongest advice that my colleague gave is build relationship. This is also not a short-term thing. It's a long-term thing. But business is people dealing with people. Whether they work for an advertising agency or whether they're a small business, you need to build relationship with them. You do that over a period of time by building credibility. So what we do is we find out, so we might set up a meeting with a uh, ad agency, we find out what clients they service, what industries they're in, and then we source content that might be interesting to them. So if we do a survey, we send it to them and say, listen, we did a survey, it affects the health industry, you've got a health client, I thought this might be of interest to you. You might also put in Google Alerts. It's something that you can do. You can Google how to put in a Google Alert. But basically, you put in a search term that um, anytime there's news that comes out that contains that search term. So you could say uh, um, health and wellness events uh, Pretoria. And anytime something is posted about a health and wellness events, Google will alert you. And so then you could take that information. If it's relevant, you could forward it on to the agency. And you could say, hi, I came across this article. I thought it might be very useful for you or for your client. And so in that way, you're building yourself up as an expert, as someone who understands business and understands the industry of their clients. So it's a great way for you to build a relationship. Uh, agencies, relationship is key. Very hard to get in very much blocked at the beginning. But once you get through, you've really got to try and build that, uh, that relationship. So I've said here, know your strengths, but it really is about knowing your listenership. What makes you unique as a brand? What's make your, your listeners unique? And you'll, you'll get that through your surveys. And then not only that, how can you add value? What are you good at? You as an individual and your personal brand, but your radio station, what are you good at? 
Do you have the most amazing outside broadcasts? Do you have presenters that are phenomenal at interviews? Do you have social media engagement that is amazing? You post something and you just get lots of comments and shares and engagement. Find out what your strengths are and develop those strengths because it's something that makes you stand out and it makes you unique. And we call that obviously your unique selling proposition. So in and amongst all of the other radio stations and all of the other media owners that there are thousands of in South Africa, how can you stand out? And again, I'll always say it in, in the two levels, you as an individual that are listening to this now, you as your personal brand, how do you stand out? And how do you make your radio station stand out? And those two things work together. One of our breakfast show hosts spoke to our local cricket team, the Dolphins, and she said something which was so amazing. She said that your first name is speaking to the players. Your first name is your first name. And that's your own identity. But your surname is shared. Your surname is Dolphins. So she was talking about having a personal brand as a celebrity cricket player and having a parent brand, which is your business. And so I would say the same thing to you. As a, as a person at a radio station, is that you have your personal brand, something that you're known for, and then you, your radio station needs to build and develop their brand and, and share what they are famous for. And those two things need to work together. And when you're approaching an ad agency, that synergy will make you stand out more. So as a personal brand, are you always on time? Are you always dressed well? Do you come with a gift? Do, do you have a sense of humor? Do you have insights into industries and tips and practical information that make you stand out like, wow, I love it when that person comes to meet with me because I always gain some new information. And then I love dealing with their brand because they have such a deep understanding of their listeners and their listeners are so engaged and active. Now you're building something that's going to be memorable in the mind of the agency person that you're dealing with. So it, it takes time. It's hard work, um, but it's something that you can work at. All right. So we, we've been very theoretical. We can go a little bit more into practical, um, some practical tips. Some of these come from my colleague, and it's just her insights into, but she deals with advertising agencies day in and day out. And I have to mention that when she started at East Coast Radio, she didn't, um, she didn't get any of the big agencies. She started in sales, and she looked after the tiny little agencies that had next to no budget. In fact, the, uh, the commercial manager at the time called her the rats and mice uh, <laughs> salesperson because she just she didn't have great clients. But through a lot of these kind of practical tips and through building relationships, she built exceptional relationships with those smaller agencies and then got bigger agencies. And now she, she looks after, I mean, she's in management, but she still looks after some of the biggest agencies in KZN with the biggest spend. So these are some really good tips. All right. And I started this already. So build better relationships with the client uh, then the agency and be transparent in your communication. Okay, so this is slightly different. Let me focus on this first. So the ad agency, like I said, is the middle person, almost the gatekeeper to get to the client. But what she's saying here is you need to build a relationship with the client as well. This is a fine line. You have to be so careful. Um, you've got to build trust. You've got to build uh, um, a reputation of trust so that when you go to the client and the agency finds out about it, they don't feel threatened. And you'll see on the next slide, um, there's been situations where media owners have skipped the ad agency, gone directly to the client and actually caused quite a lot of drama that have turned the agency against the radio station, that they will not deal with them and they will tell the client not to deal with them. So you have to be cautious about this. This tips relates once you have an agency relationship that's strong, then you should also build a relationship with the client, with the permission of the agency and those two things work together. So she said, where possible, uh, include both parties for lunches. It would also be communication, um, invites to the station, et cetera, et cetera. The agency needs to trust you implicitly because most, if not all, have been burned by a media owner who quote unquote stole their client. So an agency feels, if you go directly to the client, the agency feels that you're going to get them to book directly with you and cut them out of the loop, that they are not seen as the expert. 
So you have to be cautious of that. So start with the agency relationship. Once you build that and that strong, then with the agency's permission, you include the relationship directly with the client. And we'll get to another point that relates to that on this slide. So if you are pitching an idea to the client, her advice is always pitch the idea to the client yourself. You know your brand, you're passionate about the idea, you will do a way better job than the advertising agency will. This is the challenge of the relationship though, because to get access to the client, you need to build trust with the agency. This is a long game, it's not a short turnaround thing. But when you do that, instead of sending a proposal through to the agency and trusting the agency to go present it to the client, her words herself, the agency will never do it justice. They'll never do as good a job as you as presenting something that is your concept and your idea. So um, that is an advice that, uh, that you really need to take to heart. Unfortunately, agencies are bombarded with information. So you could share 100% information of a great concept and idea and your survey information is there and only 5%, if that, might make it to the client which is not always the best way to go. Obviously, it'll be watered down and lost. So you don't want that to happen. But it starts with the agency relationship. Build a relationship with them, build a trust with them, and then you will move forward. She also said, yeah, as part of her practical tips, always make sure you've identified the decision makers from the influencers. Sometimes even ad agencies have zero influence. Hence my first point. So what that means is you could be going to uh, uh, meetings at the agency, you could be pre presenting your surveys, you could be having long conversations, and at the end of the day, the person that you've been speaking with and building a relationship with has zero influence on anything that happens on that account. So you are, in effect, wasting your time, which is obviously not great. So you need to make sure that you understand who the decision makers are and who the influencers. You still need to build relationship with the influencers because they influence, but make sure they are an influencer, not someone who has no input whatsoever. That's very important. Okay, um, the last practical tip here speaks more about the, the, um, the items that you need to have, your tools that you need to have when it comes to speaking to agencies. So uh, she said here that you need brand or marketing collateral. So what that means is your radio station, the logo, the information on a physical object that you can leave with them. So one of the things that she told me is that agencies love to get schmoozed. Now that's a, it's a very uh, slang term, but they love to get loved. If I can put it that way, they love gifts. They love free stuff. They love uh, you bringing them coffee or a muffin or that's, that's unfortunately the media owners play that game. They, they buy them gifts and they, they do all sorts of things. So you've got to find a unique way. Again, remember your personal brand and your station brand working together. How can you translate that into an, a physical object that is going to remind them of what makes you unique? So you need to think quite carefully of them. I mean, I was, I was thinking, uh, it might come up a bit later, but I was thinking of some of the radio stations that are on, like um, Groot FM is obviously big. So you need to give them uh, a bag full of giant muffins. I know Mug and Bean does these monster muffins. And then you need to create a message that'll say, um, something around Hruit, giving you the Hruit solutions, or you need to think creatively around that. Impact FM, it, it could be your business card that you've had inserted into a piece of wood so that it stands out. These are all just little creative ideas where you can take what makes you unique and make it memorable for them. Agencies live in the creative space. They love this kind of stuff. So you need brand or marketing collateral, and it needs to be updated regularly. Um, sometimes difficult getting listenership numbers, etc. If you don't have that, that's absolutely fine. You focus on what, what makes you strong. That's where your survey information and that kind of thing will, will help you and go a long way. Uh, we also have a media kit. The media kit is a hard copy document that can be emailed or printed and, and delivered to a client, which again has just got the most important things about your station. It could be more information about your presenters, about your features, about your listeners, etc. But that media kit is a document that agencies refer to. 
So when they get a brief, you've built a relationship with them. They remember you. They will grab some document that they can refer to to see if you're a good fit. So that is important. So the other thing that agencies love is they love uh, ideas. So what used to happen um, is that agencies used to get 16.5% uh, agency commission of all media bookings. That no longer is in place. But to earn that 16.5%, what they used to do is come up with all the creative ideas themselves. So Nike would say, we want to target children. They would come up with the creative concepts and they would execute them. These days, what agencies do is they lean on us. They lean on media owners to come up with the creative ideas for them. And then they pick and choose what they like and they present it to the client. So if you are constantly, if you've got creativity within your team, you could set up a brainstorm. You could have a group of people, including a presenter, the program manager, your copywriter, whoever, in a room thinking of a particular brand and coming up with creative ideas and keep a steady flow of concept proposals going to them saying, this is what we could do. We've got a, um, a, a, a big walk coming up and we're going to be broadcasting from the big walk. So we came up with an idea of doing a live activation of a, a health product whatever it is, come up with creative ideas, put those in documents, either an email or physical copy or both even better and deliver them in a creative way on a regular basis to make sure that you're top of mind and that you stand out as being creative. Creativity is, is exceptionally important for, for agencies. Uh, and then obviously, if you have access to listener demographics and psychographics, that's another thing that's, that's very, very important to them. All right, so I did mention this earlier. 50% of all ad spend last year was digital. Agencies love digital. So we can't always fight against that. We can't say, oh, well, choose us over digital. We can say, choose us and digital. Again, you've got to carve out your niche, what makes you special, but you can say that we as radio work exceptionally well with digital. So if you're focusing on targeting an active market or a... Um, uh, a market that cares about the community or, or whatever kind of market. If you have that in your listenership, you can say, great, we can amplify what you're doing digitally on air and it'll work for the right target markets. So you've got to make sure that you're not fighting against digital because unfortunately it's a battle that for the most part we will lose because agencies are just in the digital mindset and those bigger clients are very much in the digital mindset. We've got to present ourselves as working exceptionally well with digital. So radio is a best friend. There's lots of studies online to prove that. So all you need to do is just find some of those and share that insight as well. Alrighty. So last few slides about how to get noticed. And again, this is information from my colleague. So this is practical information that would help you. So she said effective trade marketing, and she said it is essential. Agencies love to be schmoozed. There's her word. They love lots of... Um, uh, uh, gifts, but they also lack lots of interaction. So one of the ways that we do that at East Coast Radio is called roadshows. Uh, whether you do them already or don't, it's a really great way to impart information in a fun and interactive way. Uh, so something that we've done in the past is if we want to promote our breakfast show presenters, for example, we will book the breakfast show presenters on a roadshow we each day, uh, and maybe they'll go to one or two agencies after their show, and it's all coordinators and set up. So if you've got an on-air feature like a quiz, for example, that you do on air, you take them, the breakfast team, to the agency, and you do a live version of that quiz. So you do it live where you have a prize for the winner, and you conduct it for the agency staff. And so for them, they get to see your presenters in action. They get to experience one of the features, and then you can leave some information behind and say this feature is available for sponsorship. It doesn't have to be that. You could set up a coffee station, and you could hand out branded material in cups of coffee. Um, other radio stations have done soup before. So if it's cold and it's winter, uh, you could take some delicious soup, and you could do an activation at an agency. All it is is getting FaceTime and interaction with human beings and trying to build that relationship. So roadshows are a great way to do that. The other thing is you've got to build relationship from the influencers all the way up to the decision makers. So meetings, she said, with a tiered approach, uh, you could have the leader of your organization 
try and set up a meeting with the leader of the agency uh, or just the influencer of the agency where you can have a strategy discussion. What is the strategy of the station? Where are you focusing? What's your approach? Where do you see what's happening in the industry? And they could have almost like a thought leaders breakfast or coffee meeting, etc. cetera. Um, we also involve our non-sales staff very much. So our program manager and our marketing manager are very much involved with, the, um, with client interaction. So what they do is they set up meetings, they chat about ideas and content, and any ideas that are coming up where there might be a synergy between uh, the advertising agency and the radio station. And then obviously we set up lots of meetings with the presenters because if they build up, uh, especially with your best presenters, they build a relationship with that presenter and they have an understanding of how good they are, that could make a difference as to whether they book a campaign with you or not. And then we on our last few slides now. So brainstorms are also a great way for key players to engage with the collective, demonstrate creativity, and unlock sales opportunities. So what we do is we set up a brainstorm with the agency. So we invite, say, the media planner or the brand strategist. Then we have our program manager, our copywriter, a presenter, the salesperson, the sales manager, and we throw creative ideas around about a brand. So if their brand is Nike, I've used that example, you can throw ideas. What about if we do this? What about this? What about this? And again, it's highlighting your creativity. But obviously, you've got to put your best creative minds in the room because you're under pressure to come up with great ideas on the, on the blink of an eye. So that is something that can work exceptionally well because if you work with them to come up with a great idea, there's a very good chance they'll execute it on your station. They might execute it on other stations as well, but at least you get a slice of the pie. Something else we do is we give monthly mailers with data, insights, and or opportunities. Um, so I'll cover that part of it. So it's just an email with a little piece of information that they might find interesting. We might get our latest survey results and we would say our latest survey results are in and 60% of all of our listeners are going to purchase something uh, that is DIY related in the next month. If you want to find out more information, click on this link or contact your account executive. It's just giving them data that they can tap into. They love that data, but it also opens the door for any opportunities where they've got clients in that zone. Um, the next thing is, she said here, attach a question and make it a giveaway to ensure they take the time to go through it. They're competitive and they love free stuff. So you could say at the beginning of the mailer, uh, answer the question at the bottom of the mail and you stand a chance of winning a coffee hamper from our radio station. And so they will read the content and make sure they absorb it and a little inexpensive thoughtful gift uh, and then they'll answer the question and make sure that they remember the information. And also it, it's just fun, it's something different. Instead of just sending reams of information, you make it interactive and in that you make it a competition. Okay, last tip and then the last two slides and we are done. So regular visits are essential, she said. Another thing that's essential, but to see different planners, buyers, so that your visibility is high, but you aren't bombarding everyone. Most agencies have got multiple planners, multiple buyers, multiple strategists that all handle different accounts. So try and set up appointments and build relationships with each person. And as you're doing that, you're building your profile, your personal brand and your station profile and your awareness. So you become top of mind when they have campaigns. Um, the other thing that we do is what we call pop-ins. You might not necessarily set the appointment, but you might just pop in and say, is so-and-so available? I just want to drop off these three muffins. Uh, uh, she's mentioned she likes blueberry and I was going past a bakery and I thought I'd drop off these muffins for her just to show that you were thinking of them. You could be dropping off a calendar or um, updated survey results. So we call them pop-ins. They're just like your friend would pop in and say, hey, I just want to say how you are. I'm not going to take your time, but I just want to say how, how are you doing? And those are uh, ways that you build relationship with the clients. All right, last two slides, as I mentioned. Whoopsie. Uh, the first is creativity. I've mentioned this before. If you have creativity in your organization, you need to highlight it. Creativity is the lifeblood of an ad agency. They love creative ideas. A creative idea will get their attention, will open the door to a meeting. So stimulate creativity in your corridors and your passageways. Once you 
get to an idea that you have spoken to multiple people and they say, wow, this is a great idea. Then you go forward with that. But you've got to encourage and inspire that creativity in your organization. It makes you interesting and it makes you memorable to an ad agency. And speaking of creative ideas, these are three ideas that we came up with to get our foot in the door of a client or an ad agency that was being difficult and blocking us. So the first one is there was a TV advert that said, I love you so much, I would give you my last Rolo. So what we would do is we get a pack of Rolos, we would carefully and with hygiene practices take all of the other Rolos out and we put it into a box and we put a note inside of it and deliver it to the person and would say, we would give our last Rolo to have a meeting with you. Uh, please expect a phone call tomorrow to sit, choose a date and a time. Then the next one was we would give, we take a doll arm and a leg. You'd have to buy a doll and take the arms and leg off. It sounds a bit gruesome, but there's that old English saying, we give an arm and a leg to have a meeting with you. Uh, so that's another just foot in the door. Uh, you could put a foot in a door and you could say, I'm trying to get a foot in the door uh, etc. These are all ideas that are quirky and fun, but I promise you the agencies would love it. And then the last one is for a bigger client, we get a little uh, cooler bag and we put some, it doesn't have to be expensive. It could be a, a little packet of nuts and it can be a muffin and it can be some cheese or a fruit or whatever and deliver it to them uh, at lunchtime. And then you say, the note will say, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Hopefully, this can secure us a meeting with you or someone along those lines. So these are quirky little ideas that we've tried that have worked exceptionally well. If you execute them with class, it really gets people's attention. There was a big agency that we tried to get in front of and we just couldn't get in front of them. We actually found a mannequin. So you know those those like statue things that they have in the shops and we took the arm and the leg off so a mannequin leg I mean I can't even use it in the screen a mannequin leg is the size of a human leg and we put the leg and the arm in a box that was almost a meter and a half long with a big ribbon on it and we had it delivered to this agency head and he was so blown away that he picked up the phone immediately and phoned through to the organization and said, this is phenomenal. You guys are amazing. Come and see me tomorrow. So creative ideas, open doors to agencies. Um, come up with your own. I'm sure you can come up with some great ideas for depending who you're trying to target. But that is that after that long talk and lots of talking on my side. Now we want to open it up to you for any uh, questions from your side. Uh, but hopefully, like I say, you've enjoyed today and gained some information. So thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Let's open it up to some questions. Great. Thanks, Brenda. I'm sure that there are questions out of uh, some experiences and frustrations uh, that may be uh, present in the group here. There is also one question on the on the chat there, I think from- uh, uh, Yes, I've just seen it now. So the question is from the list of agency types received, which types can we be advised to approach? So it's a difficult one to answer because it does depend on the client that you're trying to reach. But my aim would be full service agencies and media buying agencies. Those would be the two that I would start with full service because they do they do everything and there's a lot of full service agencies out there so that's who i would focus on and then the media buying agencies because they choose which media to buy on um, sometimes it's based on instruction but a lot of times it's on their recommendation so they have a, a stable or a library of media that they book on so they know if we want to aim for women between 25 and 35, we go to these platforms. If we want to aim for mass market, we go to these platforms. So those are the two that I would start with. And if you don't have a specific client in mind, you just want to build relationship with them, use some of these strategies that we've covered here. And that would just get the foot in the door to, to start a conversation, to build your profile and let, um, let them know what, what it is you can do and what it is you offer. And through that regular contact, you'll get a foot in the door and it might be a small client to start off and there'll be a booking. And then you just super serve that client, super serve that agency, and that will buy you credibility to get more, uh, more exposure and more coverage. Um, but like I say, it's, it's a difficult process and it's a long process. 
it's really not easy to get into an agency, never mind build a relationship and then ultimately get business from them. It's really difficult. My suggestion for most stations, including our own, is we focus on the small and medium business um, that are also difficult to deal with, but not as complicated as an agency. And that is our bread and butter. That is our month and month, our day to day. And we build on that into the medium sized clients, which we get more revenue from. And then the agency clients is a project that we run on the side that we consistently are trying, but it's a side project. We're not putting all of our, our hopes and our dreams in that that we work on small and medium business and we do that as a side project to build up over time. Okay, there's a question there from Welcome saying, please, can you assist us with sales proposals, templates and formats, et cetera? Definitely, that's something that I can do. What I will do is I will take out the East Coast Radio logo because obviously we can't share uh, um, copy written information, but there is some structure and some format that we can help with that'll give you a guideline of, of what we've done and what you can do and you can make it your own with your own brand, etc. But just for the sake of this, what I'll do is I will share that with Natalie and uh, anyone who wants it can just let Natalie know and she can forward it out by email will probably be the easiest way to disseminate that information. And then there's a very good question here from Cindy. Um, it says, where would one get a list of agencies in the respective provinces? And now, so that's something that's a little bit harder to do um, because there are accredited agencies and there are non-accredited agencies. The accredited agencies, there's an accreditation process for them to, to become accredited agencies, to practice as an agency. And there might be a centralized database or list of those that you could find I'll also do some research into that and find out where that centralized list will sit. The non-accredited agencies are a lot more difficult to find because they're not on a list. Like I said, it could be one person that's left and formed their own agency. There's a lot of medium to big size agencies that are non-accredited, but they, they do a lot of work with a lot of clients. So it's a little bit more difficult to target, but I would say that the easiest way, the two platforms I would recommend, one is, is fairly straightforward and that would be Google. And if you're looking for agencies in your area, you could go onto Google Maps and you could say advertising agencies near me and, and Google will serve up geographically those that are in a certain kilometer radius and you'll be surprised. There are tons. The other platform that I would recommend is LinkedIn and you could do a, also a geographical search or you could just do a search based on advertising agencies, South Africa, and you'll get a list of promotional agencies and then you can choose which ones are best from there. But I will do some research to get a list of accredited agencies. And again, I'll share that information with Natalie so she can pass it on to anyone else. There's a hand up there from uh, Pagamani. Uh... Oh, awesome. Quasi. Uh, yes. Pagamani, maybe you can unmute and give us your question. Yes, please. Um, can I speak? Yes. Greetings. Hello, how are you? Um, yes, uh, you're speaking to Pagamani's colleague here, Nospue Buteles from Radio Quasi. Ah, awesome. Good to speak um, to you. I might not hear you clearly because of the difficulties with uh, some uh, our machines here. But what I want to know is that how do we deal with agencies that don't pay us in time, that keep on sending us uh, uh, adverts to be aired, but they don't give us money in time? Uh, agencies that we still have payments that are outstanding since 2017, but they wow. still keep sending us things to be aired what must we do with uh such uh agencies must we keep our relationship going or we must just stop and include and involve the uh, law in that what must we do yeah so it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a very sad situation unfortunately it's amplified i think by the impact of covid um, and there's a lot of companies, including ad agencies, that have been hit quite dramatically. But I do have to say that at some point, you're going to need to draw a line. We understand we want to maintain a good relationship with the ad agencies and we want their business. So we want to keep them happy. But good business means mutually beneficial. 
And so if they are receiving the benefit of advertising, but they are not paying for it, it is not mutually beneficial. So what I would recommend, my, my favorite thing to do whenever there's a difficult situation is to set up a face-to-face -face meeting, or at very least a Zoom call like this with your contact at the agency, or even better, someone more senior at the agency, where you go to them and you have a really positive conversation in the lines of, we we love doing good business. We love working with agencies. We love working with you. But we, we unfortunately can't continue to flight adverts free of charge and when there's no cost. We need to, number one, recoup the costs uh, of the, the advertising that has been received. And number two, moving forward, unfortunately, the payment will need to be an upfront payment. Most of these agencies these days, since the loss of agency commission, most of these agencies are on retainers or they charge their clients up front. So they receive that cash and then they use that cash to purchase media at different places. So it's not to say that they don't have the money. It's just that they probably allocated it elsewhere. So it, it unfortunately will not be an easy task to get that money back. But um, as much as you don't want to damage the relationship, it's not good business to, to practice. So I would try a positive communication first and try and set it up with the head of the organization and the head of the, the advertising agency and try and have a meaningful conversation to say that number one, we need to recoup funds and number two, it cannot continue. And hopefully that will net a good result and then you can have a, a meaningful relationship with them moving forward. Um, but unfortunately, it, you can't continue. It's just not good business. And as much as you don't want to turn that business away, you don't want to break that relationship, um, you also can't continue to give them free exposure. Our exposure is not a tangible product. Once we send it out there, that's, that's it. It's done. So um, what we do for situations like that is we move the client onto a cash upfront payment situation for a period of time until we build that relationship again and then we might move to an account situation where they pay later. But um, those kind of relationships, they're not respecting you. They're not respecting your business. So unfortunately, it can't continue. And I, I think if you do the right thing, um, the ethic right thing, that you will find funding elsewhere. Uh, I wouldn't chase after business like that. I hope that helps answer your question. The difficult situation. Great, thank you. I mean, the other question, Brennan, a number of the stations represented here are in rural areas, small towns. Um, to Is there an advantage? Are there uh, branches of uh, agencies in those small towns or does one always have to deal with cities? Um, yeah, so it's a good question. So you know what the one benefit that COVID has uh, uh, allowed us is this type of communication where we can have digital communication. I would say where possible, try and keep it like this where cameras on, uh, and microphones on, so it's as close to a normal meeting as possible. So if you're not able, if it's a if you're based in, in uh, Eastern Province and there's a, a, a advertising agency in Cape Town and you can't get to them, then this kind of relationship is the next best thing. So a Zoom or, or some kind of a video conferencing call with them to try and build relationship and follow the process. You can still get items delivered to them, et cetera, but a, a remote uh, relationship. Emails, you know what? I'm not a huge fan of emails for communication. Emails are for a transfer of information. Um, you're not going to build relationship on email. It's a tool that can pass information on. It's really not a great way to build relationships. So this kind of a thing, you can start building a relationship if you can't have a face-to-face -face engagement and then share information via email after that and share information if you deliver certain things, et cetera. But yeah, if you're limited geographically, then you need this kind of a, a platform. Even a telephone call is a much better step than a, so you make an appointment, you carve out time in their diary where you set an appointment for a telephone meeting, and then you can attempt to build relationship from there. Great, very helpful. Any, any last final questions before we uh, close this meeting? Okay, so there was a, a question in the chat, but I think I've covered it uh, in the previous question. It says, good day, agencies who battle financially and battle to pay you as a station after you service them well, how do you handle 
um, be understanding or look into terminating the, the agreement. So I think it's, it's very much the same thing. I think as any business, we are desperate for business. We're desperate for ad spend. Um, so we'll almost do anything to get them on. So back to my original point, you can, for a period of time, you can, you can deal with it and you can take it that they might pay you on 60 days or 90 days or 120 days. But if you have confidence that they're going to pay, then that kind of thing, it's not great business, but it's worth your while. If you know, and you can even set up an arrangement where you say, listen, we're going to pay you on 120 days. And if you're both in agreement and they stick to that agreement and you can afford to do that, then 100% do that. Uh, a lot of companies would appreciate the opportunity to pay much later, especially events, uh, sale promotions, this kind of thing where the client makes the money after the fact and potentially the agency makes the money after the fact. So it can work if they stick to the arrangement. So I don't mind delayed payment terms. What I do mind is, um, is people who don't pay. And at some stage, you've got to draw the line, but you start positively, you try and have a, a decision maker to, to decision maker conversation. If that doesn't work, you try and have an email confirma uh, conversation just to capture it in writing. That's slightly firmer. And then you have a slightly more direct conversation and saying, listen, this is not why we have provided a service and a product to you. You haven't paid for it. So we're going to attempt to secure that money back. And unfortunately, we, we can't do any more business with you. But the more you build your profile and your listenership, et cetera, um, the more they're going to miss out on access to your market. So that will feed into that. But you've got to draw the line somewhere. Great. I think uh, that this has really been a very valuable session. And uh, thank you so much, Brendan. Uh, next week, we're back again on Tuesday, um, 11 o'clock. And we're looking at getting money out of the government, which is another. Um, but it, the government provides a lot of money one way or another for yep. especially community radio, but yes. also commercial radio. Um, yep. And uh, we've, it's, it's a different way of working again. And we're going to learn more about that next week. Look forward to being back. With Great. Us. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, everyone. Have an amazing day. Bye, guys. Bye.